Hi, I'm Tom Hart. We uh, glad to have you with us today. We're going to shoot another show of Heart to Heart. We haven't done a lot. We're not going to do a whole lot in the future. But when there's a subject or a topic that we feel like is worthy of getting out there, we're going to use this uh, medium to to do so. And we have that topic today. It's something that uh, I think is making a difference in our city. It's one of those things you don't may not hear a lot about, but wow. Wow, it is making a difference. Uh, and let me give you just a little backdrop as I lead in, and then I will introduce you uh, to some folks. But uh, a number of years ago, uh, we looked for a new chief, and we found a nice young guy over in Colleyville, Texas, and he came over to lead our department. His name was Chief Steve Dye, and he has done some great things for our department. Our crime is down. Our customer relations is excellent our community relations he has done so much and most important what i see is a department that is so proud of what they're doing now so that is due to the leadership of our chief but a lot of people don't know there's even some things that maybe you're a little more behind the scenes and one of the programs he bought brought to us was a boxing program and i have to tell you right now boxing is not something only thing I know about boxing is you probably ought to learn to duck. So that's about the extent. But today, we're going to hear about a boxing program in Grand Prairie, Texas. So, Chief Dye, welcome, buddy. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Appreciate you having me on today. It is so nice. And I said all that sincerely. You have brought great ideas, great programs, and you're making us a better city. And this program, I, I think, is unbelievable what it's doing for some kids in our city. And... Tell me about it. What made you even think of it? Well, you know, first of all, Tom, we couldn't do any of this without our coaches. We've got five volunteer coaches that are making this program work. And, you know, when I came to the city, I expressed to you that we were really going to um, uh, operate under a community policing philosophy. And a big part of that community policing philosophy is mentoring with our youth. We need to get engaged with our youth at a young age to A, show them that the police officers are their friends have an opportunity to mentor and to teach them leadership and civic responsibility. So it was very ironic at one of the first community functions that they had for me here in the city after I became chief uh, was the uh, Hispanic community uh, hosted an event for me. And I met a gentleman there named Gerardo Contreras and Gerardo approached me about a boxing program and I grabbed him by the arm and I said, don't get away <laughs> from me because I wanted to bring a, a boxing program to Grand Prairie and, and we're gonna do this. And in short order, introduced me to Freddie Sanchez. And about four years ago, early on in my career here, we started working on this program. It took us about a year to get it developed. And we have been operational for two and a half years. So our Grand Prairie Police Youth Boxing Program, it's an opportunity for these young people to come in, learn the art and skill of boxing, but more important, learn mm -hmm. about discipline, learn about accountability. They have, they are required to make their grades to participate in the program. We check their report cards regularly to interact with our officers and these youth and to show them that, again, we are there to help them, not, not to discipline them, and to really teach them and mentor them and role model them, and then also an opportunity to interact with their parents. So just so proud of where the program has come in, in a short two and a half years of operation. Well, you mentioned uh, you couldn't do it without your volunteer coaches. Uh, you've got somebody sitting on the set with you here today. In fact, you got a couple of people. One's not on camera, but the one that's sitting with you looks very familiar to me. Uh, uh, you worked for us for a long time, and I don't think it's in the police department, and I don't remember anything about boxing in your title. That's correct. Chief, introduce Freddie from your perspective. I will. This is uh, our lead coach, Freddie Sanchez, and off camera is Gerardo Contreras. And mm -hmm. Freddie and Gerardo have just done a great job. Freddie works at, in our fleet department uh, during the day. Mm -hmm. And these coaches, Freddie, Gerardo, and our other three coaches, Monday through Thursday, every evening, they're down at our boxing gym with 40 to 50 kids every day training at our facility and on many weekends mm -hmm. at the tournaments on their own time, volunteering this time. So. Freddie uh, and Gerardo and the other coaches know how much we appreciate them. And Freddie, I'm glad you could join us today. But Thank you know you. what's amazing to me? I mean, getting a, somebody to volunteer an hour or two weeks, one thing. But Freddie, you got, I mean, you work full time with us, have for years, and one of our great members of our team. I mean, that's impressive. You're working four days a week and then some weekends mm -hmm. dedicating to these kids. Wow. Why? Help the kids, love working with the kids, and uh, it's, 
it's, I just like. <laughs> you just like it. I just like it. Yeah, I, I enjoy uh, mentoring the kids, coaching them, and guiding them the right way. There are some kids that uh, that needs guiding. They get off track and they're hanging around with the wrong people. And when it comes to the gym, they're hanging around with with good quality people. Uh, and if you hang around with the wrong person, you're gonna be just like that. You hang up, hang around with good, good person. You end up growing up like that. Uh, teach them self-defense, especially young females. It teaches them how to defend themselves, not to hurt anybody. We also try to teach them not to be a bully in school. We teach them to try to walk away from it. Uh, but if they need to take care of themselves, they can and get away. I see. Um, Freddie, we're, as I said at the beginning of this program, I know I don't know anything about boxing. Where did, where did you get a background in boxing? Did you box? I boxed when I was a little. Did you? And I boxed here in Grand Prairie. Did you? Where the okay. old community center used to be. Okay. We used to box in the basement. And I boxed since I was a little kid. It used to be the, the peewee lead uh -huh. and until I graduated from high school. Well, that's where you got your background. That's what I got, well, yes. man, I tell you what, that is really, really special. So, do you think boxing uh, contributed to anything uh, in your past? I mean, has it? Uh, did it uh, teach you any lessons? Yeah, I mean, it teached me to walk away from a lot of fights. Um, but I'm also, I know I could defend myself if I need to. Um, I respect other people, and it's a. Uh, and that's what you're trying to instill that's, in these That's what people. I'm trying to teach the kids. And that How many did you start with? So we started, when, not, when we started out, it wasn't, five, I was saying over 10. 10. Five. And did you not say we have 40 to 50 now coming through the program? Yes, we do. We're regularly yeah. training, uh, the coaches are regularly training about 40 to 50 a day. Wow. And, and we've had several success stories uh, from and this program. It's growing. The program is growing. The word's getting out there. It's getting bigger. Is there, I mean, I'm assuming because of facilities and coaches, there's a limit to how many we can handle. There is a limit, but I don't turn it down. I mean, the, I'm, the kids. I'm, I'm there for the kids. Uh, if, if they need our help, then I'm there for them. Uh, a while back, we had a, a was it about an 11-year-old kid that weighed 120 pounds? Mm-hmm. And his sister, she's about eight years old at 90 something pounds. They end up losing weight. They're not with us no more. I guess the family ended up moving, but they were losing weight and, and they, they, they shed a, a lot of weight that they look real good. The program will help any kids that's overweight, uh, that's obese, uh, sugar diabetic in the future when they get older. Uh, I have a, a young man now, Hector, he started with the with the program two two and a half years ago. He was two hundred and one, two hundred and something plus, you know, pounds. Now, being with the program, he he dropped down to about one hundred thirty eight, one hundred thirty nine. That saved him from being obese, from being diabetic. So, that being said, other kids will, will learn from that. You know, I think we're all hearing nowadays about the. Uh Maybe it's even an epidemic with childhood obesity. So, uh, I mean, I, right there is a success story. I mean, that's changed that young man's life. So, mm -hmm. well, that's great. But, uh, speaking of success, um, not only have you started a boxing program two and a half years, they're winning. Did, yes. I, do, did I hear you and the chief talking before the show that you're having to buy a new trophy case? Yeah, we've got a, a first place team trophy and we have a, a second place team trophy, and they're a pretty good size. Uh, it's like four feet, five feet tall. The team trophy, and so it's it's a. Uh, I'm I'm real, very happy, very I, happy. I with can that. tell there's a little pride there. There is. You know, I I told the kids I want that trophy. If I don't get it, y'all walking home. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> they fought hard. <laughs> it, Tom, and we in, our, in our short two and a half years, we we mainly the kids mainly compete through golden gloves and silver gloves. Mm -hmm. We've already had 12 Golden Gloves champs in, in only two and a half years, which is really amazing. And you know, one of the things that I see that I like is we're trying to teach that skill of accountability for future success as an adult. So regularly, we check their grades. We make sure that they're doing good at school so this they can enjoy this reward. Because when they get out of school, they're going to have to have accountability in their lives to be successful. And that type of mentorship, and then every day, in addition to the volunteers, down at the gym, we have a police officer there that's just there to, to work out with them and, 
and to be a you know a, a, a presence there so if they have questions issues or problems they can also go to that police officer and talk to them about whatever they may need guys I'll tell you something um, Freddie you said something a few minutes ago that I think is one of the most powerful statements uh, that I've heard and it's a statement that I believe in and that is you you are who you surround yourself with and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you said it very clearly, you know, if you're around bad people, you're going to probably be a bad person. And if you're around good people, so you've created, you guys, Chief, you and the coaches have created an environment to bring these kids in to be around some good people. And the other thing that I like is the mentorship that I see being given, first of all, by the coaches, you guys, second of all, by the police department, uh, you know, I was a, I always count myself a blessed person that I grew up in a, a loving family, wonderful parents. But you know, and they did, a, I think they did a good job as parents, but I had mentors in my life that made a difference. So I think today, anytime youth can have the opportunity of good mentorship, mm -hmm. it means something getting people to give of their time. And I'd be willing to bet you, each of y'all had mentors in your life. You know, we, we were all so blessed, but you know, every, every time I walk into the gym and I see those 40 or 50 kids, mm -hmm. the first thing that I always think about is, where would these kids be if not for this boxing gym? Had we not opened up that program, where would these 40 or 50 kids be? Well, some of them would be, would be fine, but some of them would be out there getting into trouble. And especially in today's climate with all the negative that you may see on the TV about law enforcement, we need to make sure that we're still humanizing our profession and showing our young people that police officers are human and 95% of what we do is community policing, protecting and serving, not the enforcement piece. So as they grow up to become adults, they're going to have a very favorable image of police officers because they got to know us as a young person. So I, I think that's a dual aspect of it that's really been beneficial. And uh, again, just a lot of uh, kudos to our coaches because oh, yeah. they don't turn kids away. And sometimes with 50 kids and only five coaches, they're extremely busy, but they're not gonna tell a kid that, that they can't come in. So any kid between 13 and 18 and elig is eligible for the program, but if they have a younger sibling, they'll even take on those younger siblings. So you'll see eight and nine year olds in the gym. It's pretty cool. We were uh, talking before we started shooting the show, and um, I know you talked about uh, one of the young people that has come through the boxing program, still in the boxing program, and is now going into another program that I'm very proud of that we have is our internship program. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you, one of you talk about that a little bit, please? Well, if you, want, if you want to start something yeah, out. please do. When India first came, um, she came from uh, Louisiana in the Katrina. And uh, she, had, she knew nobody here. She felt alone. She came in, she found this boxing program, and then she had a new family. She could talk to people. We coached her. Mm -hmm. She won the Golden Gloves the first year. She won the second year, the Golden Gloves. Her mother was a police officer in Louisiana. Now she wants to become a police officer. So now she, that, that's, that's what she's driving for, is just to become a police officer. So she's in this program, and she's going to compete in June, uh, in Colorado Springs, um, for a pre-trial Olympic tryout. If she wins, she'll, she'll qualify for the Olympic tryouts, and that's, that's great. Um, she's ranked number three in the nation. Really? Yes. She fought in Washington um, from about a month ago, and she got ranked number three. So, and now, that being said, now she wants to become an officer, so she's in the intern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We, Freddie's uh, exactly uh, spot on. Just a great story. Provided her a good peer group, a, a very positive, successful peer group. And now she's transitioning that into our public safety intern program. She should be starting this summer. And as you know, Mr. Hart, with your uh, guidance, we were able to create that program where the interns also go to community college and we fund those first two years of community college. So we're going to help provide her with an education as she works for the police department and then hopefully transition into being one of our officers. And, you know, I've always told the kids since we started the program and the coaches, I cannot wait for our first youth boxer 
to become an officer mm -hmm. because I know it's going to happen and it may very well be India. So we're, we're excited about her and several of the other kids that may choose law enforcement as a career. Well, I'm excited about that. I mean, uh, that was when you first started, that was one of our dreams that we'd have this program that would feed some young people right on up into our departments. And uh, uh, we're seeing that. Uh, did, we have our first officer now, don't we? Coming out of the intern program? We, well, we've had several going have, to our detention okay. program, and then hopefully soon we're going to have our oh, first officer. And then that's great. on the fire side, their intern is, is getting ready to become a firefighter. Good. So okay. it's worked out well for them as well. Well, it's a great program, and you can contact the police or fire department if you're interested in it. If you have a if you're a young person graduating from high school uh, it's a, and you're interested in a career in law enforcement, let me encourage you. Back on the boxing, though, let, let me ask a couple of questions here. First of all, like using India as an example, um, is there, I don't know, is there collegiate boxing? Is there opportunities for uh, uh, college scholarships or anything through boxing? USA Boxing, do, they do have a scholarship. Okay. Uh, you have to, I believe, box or compete twice a year to qualify for it. Okay. You have to be going to a, a full-time college, but there is there is money there Okay. for that. But there's not an intercollegiate, uh, like boxing, uh, uh, UT against OU, that type of thing? Uh, when, when they're in college, they have this frat night college boxing, they do have that, and that's a big fundraiser. Okay. Uh, they used to have it here in, at Cowboys before it closed down, and that, that, that money they get there is to help the Arlington Boys and Girls Club. It's a it's a money for that for that to. to but raise. college aside, I guess my next question: What I'm hearing you saying, we could literally have somebody on an Olympic track coming through our program. Yes, yes we, very possible. That could be life changing. Very. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. I, that's uh, Coach. Are you Freddie or Coach? I've known you, Freddie, all these years. Now you're Coach, but Coach. And you earn that title. Let me tell you, you got my respect for what you've done. And I say that sincerely, Freddie. You giving your time of this program and the other coaches giving their time. Um, I tell you, you know, they they may never build a statue of you, but you're going to have a statue in your heart because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've already seen it and we're hearing about you're changing lives. And, you know, that's what we need out there. I mean, we spend... So much of our time, Chief, you and I are talking about problems. Mm -hmm. We need to be talking about the good stuff, the kids that are making the right decisions. You know, they're not doing drugs. They're not doing alcohol. They're not smoking. They're learning values that you learn through sports, that you're, you as a coach and a mentor, police officers, Chief, my goodness, you know. I mean, let's face it, most of us growing up, what contact did we have with the police officer? You know, we were probably getting a speeding ticket. So, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. You're, you're giving these young people an opportunity to meet some of the great examples of young men and women that you have in your department that, yeah, they're a police officer, but they're good people. Absolutely, and I'll, I'll tell you, Tom, it, I think what satisfies me the most is we built a youth boxing program that will sustain long after we're all gone. And I think that's what we should all be doing is establishing programs that are not dependent upon us as individuals, creating legacies through creating programs that will be uh, going into per perpetuity. So we're, we're potentially changing family trees. We help these youth, that's gonna help them have a better life for their kids and their grandkids. So we're, we can affect generations through changing or helping the life of just one kid. And I, I would also be remiss if I didn't give a lot of credit to GPISD. Our school district really stepped up when I wanted to start this program and I needed a place to have the gym. Uh, they gave us uh, the old uh, Houston Elementary gym over at 1502 College for our, our facility. And Dr. Every, Hall immediately she did. jumped on the wagon yes. with you, didn't I, she? I went to Dr. Hall and I said, this is, this is our idea, this is the program that we want to have, but I, I need a facility. And she told me, I'll never forget, she said, Chief, we'll find you a place to, to have this gym. I don't know where it's going to be, but we'll find you a place. And she did. And so they've been great partners in, in letting us uh, house there for two and a half years and really keeping the maintenance on the building at, at a high level. So we, we really appreciate that partnership. Well, knowing and being a friend with Dr. Hull, I can tell you I'm not surprised. She is transforming our school. So I think anything that fits into a partnership arrangement where these efforts are 
making the kids, a lot of them are, grand, I guess most of them are Grand Prairie mm -hmm. School District kids. I'm not surprised, but she is transforming our district and I love what I see, the schools of choice. So, but Dr. Hull, if you're watching, let me say on behalf of all of us, thank you for getting on board and letting us use that facility because it's make, you can, you've heard, it's making a difference. So, so Freddie, what's your goals? I mean, wh what do you hope to see in the future on this program? Um, future? Olympics, okay. uh, possible professional uh, professional fighter, okay. um, good officers that they, they can take care of themselves in the streets. It's and and kids not being obese. I mean, it's, it's a lot of good things that I hope it comes out of this program that that I wanted to come out. Well, I'd say those are worthy, Chief. Is it meeting your expectations? It, it is. You know, it, and again, we could not be doing what we're doing without our our coaches. That those volunteer hours mm -hmm. are into the thousands every year. Um, we're going to always focus on the mentorship and the development of future leaders. I don't care if they box professionally or become a police officer. We would love to see that happen as sure. an added bonus. I just want them to be good, civic-minded adults. Most of these kids come from good families, but many of the parents work many hours to support them. So this is an outlet after school where they can go and be in a good peer support group. Um, ag again, just open it up to anybody that in Grand Prairie that's watching to please contact us if they're interested. Uh, we would love to have their child come in. And y the coaches do a great job of, of always having an area for the parents to stay and watch and be involved as well. So, you know, it becomes a family when we're off at the tournaments and I try to go to a few of them. Mm -hmm. You know, the coaches are there with the kids, but the parents are there. So it also heightens the entire sense of community in our city. Oh, that's great. D uh, curiosity, did you ever box? I did not, but I, I grew up with two older brothers, so I didn't officially <laughs> box, but I had my share of, of rounds, trust me. <laughs> well, you know, I'll have to meet you at the gym one day. I did learn one boxing move. I could throw my face into somebody's fist, <laughs> so that was when I was a kid, so uh, I don't think you want that move, but I'm surprised. Uh, I, I boxed in the police academy in Houston, and, and I did okay. I did okay. <laughs> you did do some boxing then. You Just know, I... Uh, I probably should have done a little more background on Chief Die. You know, I mean, boxing's pretty tough. But what I found out after I get him here, he he was a bareback rider in the rodeo or bull rider or one of those two. I mean, both. Yes, sir. Both. I think. No offense, Chief, but you got to be. I think you got to be crazy <laughs> to get in the ring with some of these people. But to get on one of those horses, I don't know. So, uh, but I'm I'm glad I'm glad to have you guys here. It's fun. Great program. Uh, I love it for the kids. Uh, one of one of my dreams for this city, and we're working on some of it through our new EPIC project, will be that our facilities will actually help teach values. And that is something, I, I guess, when I list the things in the, you know, the world that I, I, you know, I'd like to see a difference on is, I think today versus 50 years ago, I think our kids get less opportunities for value training. Uh, I think you've seen declines in a lot of activities that maybe 50 years ago people did. They were maybe went to church camps, they went to Bible uh, studies, they were at the, you know, boys club, girls club, YMCA, they were involved in organizations, DMLA, uh, they were more in sports, uh, where people were competitive, but it's not quite as like it is today, where it's, you know, it, it's the focus on so much on the select and all of that. And these kids were getting the values training, mm -hmm. simply learning good values. I mean, you know, the, even beyond sportsmanship, I mean, it was just learning to be good people. And uh, I, I don't know if they get all that opportunity now. Hopefully they get some at home. but. Freddie, what you and the other coaches are doing is you're, you're delivering that. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I'm proud of you, first of all, as just an individual. But second of all, I want to say this. I'm proud of you representing the employees of the city of Grand Prairie in giving back to this community. Okay, You make a salary for what you do during the day, but you're giving back at night. And... I, I applaud you for that, and I applaud the rest of the coaches. So, guys, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you coming on and talking about it today. I'm going to say, got any last words you want to share with anybody out there? 
Gym's open to the Grand Prairie residents, kids, come on. Okay. Chief, floor is yours, what about it? Well, anybody that lives in Grand Prairie, any male or female youth that are interested, their parents just need to come by our gym anytime Monday through Thursday between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. It's at 1502 College, the old Houston Elementary, or they can find information on the website about the program. I encourage them, if they even may remotely think that they're interested, come by, talk to the coaches, uh, talk to the other parents, uh, get involved. It's a great program. Hats off again to our coaches for all that they do for our youth. Mm -hmm. And this is just a great mentoring opportunity. And uh, when you talk to those kids that are in our program, they're gonna shake your hand, they're gonna look you in the eye, and they're gonna say, ma'am and sir. So we are teaching those values that we want not only to see them uh, exhibit, but also to be successful in life. So that's, uh, we're very big on that and accountability. So, you know, I think the city should be proud of this program. And I'm just uh, feel so blessed that the city supported us in getting it uh, accomplished. Chief, we are proud of the program. And you know, you and I get to interview people. What you just said about what you teach them, just those manners will set them apart when they walk into job interviews in the mm -hmm. future. So you guys are why I enjoy being city manager in Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh, you are making us better. You're teaching people. You're bringing great ideas. and. Uh, so let me say thank you and look forward to following the progress thank of the program. You. And this is Tom Hart, City Manager in Grand Prairie. Glad to have you watching us again. And we'll be doing periodic shows when we have something that we think you'll be interested in. And I, well, I hope you were interested in this one. So folks, have a great day and we'll see you down the road.